Previously on the bill. Liam, oh, what's he done to my head? He was threatening you, Dad. Liam. Liam stays with Bob. He ends up in hospital, jail, or worse. Helen Hartley, I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempted murder. No! There's that one hair on that kid's head who regret it. It's my son. Join us. What was it? Alarm clock problem? Transport problem? Yeah, sort of, man. The back of my bike had a bit of an argument with Bendy Bus. Uh, hang on a minute. You have had a visitor, a Liam Harvey. He left about 15 minutes ago. Did he say it was about? No. He just wants you to call him. All right? He knows you've got his number, but he left that just in case. Wasn't it his mum that you arrested last week for attempted murder of her husband? Yeah, she asked me to keep an eye on him. Well, go on, Mr. Gray. So I'll just don't wait until. Sure. Hey, hey, hey. Nice kids. Oh, I don't need to start the morning I've had. Well, it's just about to get worse. You know, the drill, last one in, gets paired with the skipper. Yeah, the sergeant's got some nice plans for you today, mate. Sierra 1, Sierra 1, you've got a male assaulted, head injury. Rail to Street Bridge, ambulance on way. Received. Been keeping on this bridge for six months. It's my home. Not me chased away. Not my kids, not by anyone. Kids? Yeah. We we'll to get a few, playing paint. You know, throwing stones, stuff like that. Is that what it was this morning, kids playing pranks? No. It wasn't a prank. It was a murder attempt. If you don't believe me, I'll show you the murder weapon. I wake up. I come over here. You know, spend a penny. Next thing I know, this thing cracks me on the head and knocks me out cold. I didn't wake up till some bloke walked his dog found me and called an ambulance. Is that what I think it is? Bricks! I told you it was a murder attempt. You kids today. Animals! I don't think this was kids, Mr. Smith. Why not? Because these aren't bricks. You've been hit over the head by about £20,000 worth of cocaine. Do you get a reward by any chance? OK, so sometime between about 6 and 6.30 this morning, somebody threw this rucksack containing several bricks of uncut cocaine over the bridge at Relton Road. Why would anyone throw that much cocaine away? Might be worth checking if there were any stop and searches in the area at the time. Maybe somebody panicked. Yeah. Might be worth checking where this cocaine originated from, too, because somebody's going to be very annoyed to have lost that much. Yeah, well, I bet there's more where that came from. Yeah. OK, so the coke and the rucksack have been sent to the lab for further testing, fingerprints, DNA and so forth. But I will need some bodies to go and sweep the area and check for CCTV. Well, Will and Sally have already requested CCTV tapes. I'll see if anyone's available to them. As I was saying, PC Gale's available to do a fingertip search of the area around the bridge. <laughs> well, I'm the best of days, aren't you? Yeah, well, nothing a good fingertip search for sewage and mud can't fix, eh? Hey? Well, look on the bright side. I'll be close by giving moral support the entire time. Who was it on the phone? Liam Harvey. Liam? Well, the lad you wanted taken into care. I thought I told you to steer clear of him. Yeah, well, he came to see me this morning. What is it? I think Liam's in trouble. We'd better get around it. Well, we ain't going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. Listen to the message. Uh, no, uh, please don't. It was a mistake. Uh. I'll draw it. Yeah. I'm still busy. Oh, I should just answer this call, you know? I should... Sarge? Liam? Sarge! Liam! He's breathing. Barely. Call an ambulance! There's one on the way. Mr. Harvey. What's happened here? I don't know. I, I, someone broke in. I just come and found him like this. Liam, are you going to be all right, OK? OK. Whoever did this to you, I promise. Sarah Rusker from 30. She's got a check with an ambulance. Right, the boy's name is Liam Harvey. Stevie and I first met him last week when we nicked the mother for stabbing the father in the back with a meat skewer. <laughs> Why did she do that? Apparently, the father, Bob, stole the kid's school fund and put it on a horse. <laughs> Now, there's dysfunctional and then there's dysfunctional, do you know what I mean? Possible broken collarbone, head and facial injuries, but he's alive. Any idea who did it? Yeah, useless coward. House broken into? Four stentory place turned over. CSC's on their way now. Beth and Tony doing door to door. Well, what are they looking for? That's the thing. Harvey's a broke. The only thing of worth in that house is the house itself. What's the father's story? Well, he thinks it must be junkies. Says he came home ten minutes before we got there, found the place turned over and Liam in a heap. Then he called an ambulance and waited in case the burglars came back. Yeah, but he didn't call the police. He just fought himself. What do you mean, Clyde? He called 999, then. 
might not have occurred to him to ask for the police specifically. We haven't questioned Mr Harvey yet, for obvious reasons. They can wait till his son's out of intensive care. We may as well check out the crime scene. Mm. There's nothing more to be done here. Junkies, eh? They're the most thorough junkies I've ever come across. And the pickiest. You get a couple of quid for this online, wouldn't you? Someone was looking for something in particular. Or sending a message. Such. None of the neighbours saw or heard anything out of the ordinary this morning. Right. But a lady next door did say she heard shouting coming from here a few days ago. And when she looked outside, a man was threatening Mr Harvey. She remembered this bloke in particular because she said he had a really big scar on his forehead. In fact, she said it looked as though someone had carved something into his head. Dylan Morrison. Who's Dylan Morrison? He's a loan shark and a part-time blackmailer. We pulled him in last week, but we had to let him go. He's a slippery customer and he's dangerous. What, dangerous enough to put a 12-year-old in intensive care? If he has to. Look, there's no love loss between him and Harvey. He blames Harvey for this little tattoo business, although Harvey's completely still bears a grudge against him. You must know we'd still be looking at him. Was he stupid as well as dangerous? Well, the thing is, Harvey owes this guy £7,000, and him being a loan shark, he's going to get the money back as best he can, isn't he? Just get that. Go! Black boys found a partial print on the cocaine. Now, they're running it through the system, but it could take some time. Hello. OK, what about CCTV? Yeah, Will and Sally are touring through that now. OK, Can thanks. Can you you? That was Sergeant Stone. Apparently, Morrison's ready to be with you downstairs. You go, then. There's a 12-year-old boy in intensive care. <sighs> I don't care. You think this is funny? I think it's a waste of my time. I'll say one thing for that tattoo. It ain't false advertising. All right, enough of this nonsense. You were seen threatening Bob Harvey again a couple of days ago. This morning, his house was turned over and his son was put in hospital. Now, you've got the motive, the capability and the form. Do you get what I'm saying here? Look, this has been fun, but the fact is, I'm finished with the Harvey family. I've got what I want. If I never see Bob Harvey again, then that suits me fine. Say that again. What do you mean you got what you want? My money. Bob paid me back yesterday. What, all £7,000? In cash. Where did he get that much dough from? I didn't ask. I don't care. Look, are we done? I've got an appointment with a cosmetic surgeon. I thought Bob Harvey was supposed to be skinned. Well, he is. At least he was last week. Seven grand's hard to come by in a hurry. Yeah, not legally, anyway. Looks like Dylan Morrison's a dead end up. We're not looking at Dylan Morrison for Liam's assault anymore. No, Will and Sally have found a different line of inquiry. Look, this is 6.24 in the morning, the north side of Railton Road Bridge. Lab walks across, and look what he's got on his back. A rucksack. OK, there's no vision on the bridge itself, but two minutes later, this is the south side. He appears again. And look, no rucksack. That's our suspect. You got a clue on this one? It's Liam. Right, so at 6.25, Liam Harvey throws a rucksack off the Relton Road Bridge. 20 minutes later, he's in reception asking to speak to Ben. Yeah, he stayed for about 10 minutes, then left, leaving only his number. About an hour later, Liam actually rings Ben. We assume that this is the time that he was actually assaulted. So how did this boy get the drugs? And why did he throw them away? And what did he want to talk to Ben about? We won't know that till we talk to him. Is there anywhere from the hospital? Oh, he's off the danger list, but still not ready for interview yet. So here we have a kid who's thrown away thousands of pounds worth of cocaine. It's clearly terrifying. Oh, no, there's something wrong here. Look, Liam's a good kid. He wouldn't get caught up in something like this. Ben, pictures don't lie. Liam had that cocaine. And it belongs to someone else. The question is, who? Get onto the lab, find out how we're doing with that partial print. Talk to his father. Why has he got £7,000 in cash at the same time his son is found with a bag of cocaine? And softly, softly, Mr Harvey has no form for anything like this. Definitely. It was the first time for everything. Cocaine? That's a mistake. Then what would Liam be doing with a bag of cocaine? We were hoping that you might be able to shed some light on that. What's that supposed to mean? I've never had anything to do with drugs. Yeah, but you've been getting by all right, though, haven't you? I'm sorry? Dylan Morrison tells us that you paid him back the seven grand you owed him. Where did you get that kind of money? Look, what exactly are you accusing me of? We're not accusing you of anything, Mr Harvey. We just want to confirm what Mr Morrison told us. I sold my car. Right? Dylan Morrison was hassling me. I had no choice, so I sold my car. To an acquaintance. You can check with the DVLA if you want. What do you think you're playing at? Right. Going in like a bull in a china. I just thought I could get... Just it. nothing. You're supposed to be helping us with the knowledge of these people. Sorry, Sarge. All right. Thanks. To be fair to Ben, Bob Harvey is just a bit of a wind-up merchant. Right, that was Stuart. They got a match on that partial print. OK, then, Luke Jarrett, age 32, 
form for possession with intent to supply, <laughs> criminal intimidation and assault. He's also got a reputation for using tweens as runners, there you go. Oh, clever boy, isn't he? Using under 10s, below the age of criminal responsibility. Well, any kid under the age of 14 is only going to get a caution, isn't he? He's less likely to grass up Jarrett to avoid a tough sentence. And you think Liam's one of these kids? It's a possibility, yes. Oh, well, with respect, Sarge, I don't think it is. Well, Liam wouldn't run drugs. We understand you like the kid, Ben. Well, it's not that. I just think we're focusing on the wrong theory here. Look, Liam wouldn't do that. Not of his own free will, I know it. Well, thank you, Ben. But we'll follow the evidence, not your instincts, OK? One way or another, Liam Harvey came into contact with Luke Jarrett's cocaine and then he ended up in intensive care. Yeah, well, knowing it and proving it are two different things. Yeah, the partial print isn't going to be enough. It's brief or just argue coincidence. We need to find out where he's running the operation from. Let's look into his finances, check out his income. What about an oboe? I mean, Jarrett's got no reason to suspect that we're looking for him, so it could give us an edge. Can we borrow some uniforms? Yeah, of course. Mom, I'd like to be involved. No, sorry, Ben. I'm sure that Sergeant Stone's got something much more interesting for you. Ben. You want to tell me what's wrong? Nothing. I just think we're making a mistake, that's all. You might want to back that up with some evidence next time you interrupt a DI in the middle of a briefing. Just a thought. What am I supposed to do, Dave? Eh? I'll just keep my mouth shut. No, but you can stop acting like you're the only one who gives a damn. You can't let it become personal, then. You know that. Why are you so angry? I promised his mum I'd look out for him. Yeah? And look what happens. What are you supposed to do? You're blaming yourself for that, but it's not just stupid, it's self-indulgent. I could have done more. I could have had Liam taken away from his father, made social services see that Liam was at risk. No, I tried to, but you stopped me. So now you're blaming me? You've got the makings of a good cop, Ben. But you've got issues. Especially when you don't get your own way. You don't, no, no. You don't have the right to separate a boy from his father. Social services decide that. The only person that can change that is Liam. It's what he wants that counts. Liam has got to make his own choices about his dad, right or wrong. And believe me, I know a thing or two about deadbeat dads. Do you really want to help Liam? You'll stop indulging yourself and you'll focus on who put him in that hospital and stop it from happening again. It's too late. The inspector calls already benched me. No. The inspector asked me to find you something else to do, which I have. I've contacted the DBLA, and Mr Harvey sold his car to an Evan Griggs 38 Peabody Street. Well, why don't you and me go round there and find out what Mr Griggs has got to say about our Mr Harvey? Sarge? He wants to be stuck on an obo anyway. It's a mug's game, isn't it? Nice house for a drug dealer. Well, that's nothing compared to what I'm buying when he moves a few rungs up the ladder. Mm -hmm. We've got some movement. Business or pleasure, Luke? Okay. Listen, there's a 3G phone in that glove compartment. Stick that chip in it. Send the pictures back to the Nick, and we'll run them through facial imaging. Okay. Right. Well, we're on the move. Here we go. 38 Peabody Street. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Bob Ivey sold his car to someone that lives in a pub. No, I don't live here. No, but not since I sold the place. I got bought out last year, but stayed on as the landlord. Still use the address for stuff like that, though. Bob hasn't sold me a stolen car, has he? No, nothing like that, Mr Briggs. We just need to check out a few financial irregularities. When exactly did you make the transaction? A couple of days ago. And Bob wanted cash, so the whole thing went through pretty much straight away. To be honest, I only bought the thing as a favour. The poor bloke's been going through quite a bit recently. Got made redundant months ago. Couldn't find a new job. Bob's not in any trouble, is he? I mean, I know he can be a bit abrasive, but he's not a bad sort, really. Mr Harvey's not in any trouble. No, not since you gave him seven grand for a second-hand car. <laughs> seven grand? <laughs> not likely. I like Bob, but I'm not daft. The dentist, you know. He'd had some class of an accident last week. Mm. How much did you pay for it, Nick? Fifteen hundred. Listen, mate, did you get the, the photos of the guy that Jarrell was meeting? Yeah, I was putting them through facial imaging as we speak. All right, listen, let me know if there's a hit, will you? Okay, we'll do. 
Yeah. Pizza for Diaz Turner. Didn't order a pizza, mate. <sighs> Maybe he's not as stupid as he looks. Yeah. Some hold that one there. What are you doing? I got my order wrong. Mr. Jarrett. You know, you forgot the pineapple. Sorry, Detective. I couldn't resist. I mean, it's not every day you get told by a celebrity. Oh, no, those days they're behind me. Oh, you never lose the taste. Whatever you think I've done, I have. I've gone legit. <laughs> yeah, property development. Very handy. You seem cynical. Me? No, no, Luke. Now, listen, um, for the pizza. Because we can't accept gifts these days, it's not considered proper. See ya. But Dylan Morrison said that Harvey paid the whole seven grand back. Which leaves five and a half grand unaccounted for. Where did Harvey get the rest of the money from? Over the last six months, Jarrett's been steadily buying up or investing in bricks and mortar. So what does the paper trail look like? On the surface, it's all looking self-financing, but he's bought more than he's sold and not always at a profit. Well, that's not what he told me. According to Jarrett, there's more money in property than cocaine these days. Not on these figures, there's not. He's running on credit. He's mortgaged to the hilt on the three properties he owns outright. His home, his office and a pub. The, uh, the Jew drops in. And we were just there. Doing what? Talked to the landlord, Mr. Griggs. Says he only paid 1,500 quid for Harvey's car. So it seems that Harvey's been lying about where he got the money from to pay off Dylan Morrison. And Harvey's local is owned by Luke Jarrett. There's a coincidence. Yeah, that's how Liam must have got involved in Jarrett in the first place through his dad. I mean, he'll do anything for his approval. Yeah, Harvey come into a lot of money very quickly. Maybe when Liam realised what was in the rucksack, he panicked. Yeah, well, just because Jarrah owns the pub doesn't necessarily mean he's come into contact with the punters. Who's this? We don't know yet. Why? We've seen him with the dewdrops. Yeah, he came in and went upstairs. There's too many connections going on here. Harvey definitely knows more than he's letting on. Well, Beth and Tony took him back to the hospital when they moved Liam from ITU. Go and pick him up. He's awake. Here, I'm taking instruction. All right. Hey, you all right, mate? Who did this to you? I don't know. Don't know, Liam, or can't remember. Come on, Liam, it's OK. We'll protect you, I promise. I remember. I just don't know. Some men, th they broke in and started smashing the place up. I tried calling you. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I was knocked down. I don't know anything after that. Do you have any idea of why these men might have been there? It's my fault. I think it might be because of the bag I found. Bag? A rucksack. I found it in the street. It had some stuff in it. What kind of stuff, Liam? D drugs, I think. So I threw it away. Then the men came and started asking about drugs. And, and I told them I threw it away. But they didn't believe me. Where'd you find the bag, Liam? What does that matter? In the street. Which street was that? I, I can't remember, OK? Look, Liam, you can tell me the truth. You know that. Pussy Gale. Give the boy a break. He's just woken up and here you are interrogating him. I know you came to see me at the station and I wasn't there. I'm sorry about that, but I want you to tell me, tell me hey, then. Okay? Hey, it's enough. I've told you everything I know. Sorry. It's okay. Thanks, Liam. Some people from CID are going to come down and see you a bit later when you're feeling stronger. In the meantime, we'd like you to come down the station, Mr. Harvey. What now? To answer a few questions about Luke Jarrett. Right. You hanging in there, buddy. All right, I'll get back before you know it. I'm very proud of you. Well, you take Mr. Harvey downstairs. I'm going to phone Max and let him know that Liam's conscious. Sarge, come in. You don't mind, do you? It's just been that all my day. Oh, yeah, it must have been very hard on you. You like charging people, don't you, mate? Interfering. Don't you want to learn to stay out of other people's business. Keep that sticky little bit of yours yourself. Look, you're not going to get away with this. Get away with what? What you did to Liam. I know you're responsible. You've got nothing on me. And it's going to stay that way. You know, you might think you got the Liam last week with you. What was it? Being there for him? But Liam knows what's right and proper. I'm family. You're not. And family sticks together. Oh, I can you stuck by your wife? So I remember it was her who was doing the sticking. 
<laughs> Meat skill, wasn't it? Oh, I see. You feel sorry for her. You think the soppy cow got a raw deal? Where did your sympathy get up? Get your hands off. I warned you. I'll be watching. If anything happened to Liam, you would agree. Yeah, well, look what did happen to Liam. Proud of yourself, are you? Content? Maybe next time you can... Ben? 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 He's just attacked me for no reason. I'm going to have you. I'm going to have you a job for this. Just keep that psycho away from me. Shut up. Did he attack you? No. He, he told me that he attacked Liam and I... I just lost him. He admitted he assaulted Liam, so he resisted arrest. Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't caution him. Do it now, with me as a witness. Go on, move. Pop Harvey, I'm arresting you for ABH. Arrest you don't have to me. say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention... Are you lot mad? He's just headbutted me. Look! I can see it. So maybe Go inside and get it looked at. Now. Explain. I can't. What are you doing? Focus in your mind, PC Gale. You've got a couple of hours to get your story straight, or your career has just ended. Understand? Yeah. Get in the car. Max, the stone. We've got a bit of a problem. Uh, we've had a hit on facial imaging. This guy here is called Russell Guthrie. Uh, he's known to Barton Street as the go-to guy for cutting cocaine and speed. Checks show that he's living at the Dew Drops Inn. Right, I think we should put some surveillance on that place. OK, I'll see you soon. Bye. So, has Mr Harvey been brought in? On his way now, but it might be too late. We have a problem. Liam is up and talking, but it looks like he's been coached to tell a story by his dad. And Harvey has confessed to Ben that he attacked Liam. But there's some confusion over the arrest. Confusion? Over the grounds. Harvey's alleging unlawful arrest. What? It gets worse. Harvey's been injured in the process. It's a mess. I have just been assaulted, and I'd like to know what you are going to do about it. I've noted your complaint. I'll contact the DPS so they can investigate. Now, if you make sure that Mr Harvey will see the FME, then put him in a cell until we're ready to talk to him later. Thank you very much. Ben? What happened? Sorry, Mark. I didn't ask you how you felt. I asked you what happened. When we got to St Hughes, Mark, Liam Harvey was conscious. We tried to question him, but he's pretty obviously been coached and trained by his dad. Ben took Mr Harvey outside of the car to bring him back here. Under caution? No, at that point it was just an informal chat. It wasn't until Mr Harvey admitted that he'd assaulted Liam that Ben arrested him. You got anything to add to that, Ben? No, Mark, that's, that's about it. And did you witness the incident? No, Mark, ma'am. Side and Stone didn't arrive until after the, um, the arrest. Right, if you'd like to wait outside. Oh. Any civilian witnesses? No. CCTV? Not that I saw, Mum. Then you better find some, because otherwise it's Ben's word against Harvey's and we don't know which way the DPS is going to jump. You're going to bring the DPS in now? Well, we don't have any choice, do we? You know that. I'll get on to CID and you tell Sonny Jim what he's about to face, all right? Mom. Right, you and me can have a chat. So, Ben arrested Harvey for GBH of his son. On what grounds? Well, according to Ben, Harvey had just admitted doing so. But according to Harvey, he says he didn't confess to anything, just that Ben misunderstood him. Very clever, isn't it? He admits to saying something incriminating to Ben, but that he didn't intend to. Almost too clever. It's like he deliberately goaded Ben. But why? He knew he wanted to talk to him about Lou Jarrett. Maybe he wanted to create a diversion. Well, look, if we can prove any of this, it would really help Ben with the DPS. And he's going to need it. He's been gunning for Harvey all day. OK, go back to the pub. Talk to the landlord, Mr Griggs. See if there's any kind of relationship between Luke Jarrett and Bob Harvey. If Harvey deliberately goaded Ben, I want to know what his agenda is. You even going to bother trying to explain yourself? What do you want me to say? He meant it, Sarge. I don't care what he says now. He told me that he did that to Liam. He beat up his own son. He was taunting me. But well, you're an even bigger idiot for letting him get to you. You think I don't know that already? Look, there is nothing that you can say that can make me feel any worse than I already do, all right, Sarge? 
Why do you feel bad? Is it because you acted unprofessionally? Because you let yourself get sucked in? Huh? Because you potentially ruined an investigation into a major cocaine dealer, not to mention jeopardised any case against Bob Harvey himself? No! Look, I feel bad because I lost control. Because I sorted a member of the public. Because I failed. Well, that answer makes you human, Ben. Then, if that's the answer you want to give the DPS investigators, you can kiss your career goodbye. Mr. Jarrett? Yeah, he comes in and out of the place. He doesn't get overly involved, which is how I like it. Has Bob Harvey had any contact with Jarrett? Bob? Not that I know of. Then again, Bob's in here all hours, so anything's possible. Look, is there something going on I need to know about? Or is this a, a strictly need-to-know type of thing? Gotcha. Can you tell us a bit more about Mr. Jarrett? Well, like I said, he, he doesn't get too involved in the pub side of things. He sticks mainly to the living space above. Rents it out to friends and whatnot. They come and go at all hours. Did you ever think that was a bit odd? I don't ask questions. Strictly need to know, and I don't need to know. Besides, Mr. Jarrett doesn't exactly take me into his confidence. One thing was odd, though. We had a break-in upstairs a couple, of, a couple of nights ago. I got a call from the security company. When I went to see Mr. Jarrett about it, uh, he told me to forget it. Didn't want any police involvement or anything. Jarrett said he'd deal with it himself. OK. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. You've been very helpful. So, just to be clear, take a seat. Tell me again what happened when you took hold of the suspect. Why are we going through this again? Because until the DPS say otherwise, you're still a PC and I'm still your sergeant. He was taunting me, laughing at my concerns for the welfare of his wife, for his son, asking me where my pity had got them. He was trying to make you angry? Yeah, I suppose so. Succeeded too, didn't he? You're also coiled up. It's as if you're trying to contain yourself. All the time, Ben. That's got to be tiring. It's OK to get angry, Ben. You just need to channel it. Why are you telling me this? Because I'm trying to make you understand that you don't need to feel guilty for being angry with Bob Harvey for knocking his son about. It was wrong! No, no. Losing control. That was wrong. You can make it right. How? By taking control back when you go in front of the DPS. We agree, yeah? That Bob Harvey was deliberately goading you. Yeah. That he wanted you to get angry for what he did to his son. Yeah. So you grabbed him to ensure that his goading couldn't take a physical form, right? Uh, I suppose so. That's when he pushed you. So what? To escape your grip, Bob Harvey pushed you back against the wall. That's what happened, didn't it? In fact, he pushed you so hard that you cracked the back of your head. Which, I presume, Ben, is why you've now got a lump back there. That's why you banged my head. I don't know what you're talking about, PC Gale. My recollection is that you'd already incurred the injury when I arrived on the scene. You planned this. Back at the hospital, you, you stumbled. And you fell, you remember that. Then, as you looked up, you saw that the suspect was about to headbutt you, so instinctively, you lowered your head. There was a clash of heads, and the suspect fell to the ground. Well, that's what happened. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Just so long as you're clear, It's your decision, Ben. No one's forcing you. No, Sarge. No, Sarge, I'm clear. Fine. Then I suggest you go and see the FME and tell them exactly how you got your injuries. Sergeant Stan? 
I've just met her, Mrs. D.C. Randall. Please take a seat. We understand you were the first officer on the scene after the alleged assault took place. That's right. I told PC Gale to take Mr. Harvey to the car when I informed CID that Liam, Mr. Harvey's son, was conscious. So Mr. Harvey was not considered a suspect at this time? Not at the time, no. I see. Would it be fair to say, at the time, the grounds for arrest were murky, to say the least? That would be fair comment, at the time. Meaning? Meaning that if Mr. Harvey had told me what he told PC Gale about his son, I would have had the cuffs on him before he had time to resist. But I guess that's just a benefit of experience. Ben, you all right? No, not really, no. I promised I'd keep an eye on Liam. His mum knew that something like this had happened, they'd get hurt somehow, but I couldn't stop it. I just got so angry, you know. I really messed up, Sally, and you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just tell the truth, yeah? You'll be all right. Sarge, how did it go in there? You just be clear about what happened, yeah? Sarge, uh, DS Carter wanted to see you as soon as you came out. There's been a breakthrough on the Jarrett case. Right. Mr Harvey and I talked about the investigation involving his wife last week. How would you describe the tone of this conversation? Cordial. Mr Harvey told us that you exchanged heated words, that you had problems with how Mr Harvey treated his son. That's correct. I, um... I was asked to keep an eye on Liam by his mother. I went round there to give him my card. Mr Harvey wasn't pleased about that. I then told him that I'd be watching, that nothing better happened to Liam. You threatened him? I informed him. And this had nothing to do with why you suddenly felt you had grounds for arrest outside the hospital today? I reminded Mr Harvey of what I had said about Liam not being her. He smiled at me and asked me where they had got Liam, meaning that he had assaulted his son. And part of the motivation in doing so was out of spite towards myself. But it was my fault. And that's when you decided to arrest Mr Harvey? Yeah. How did Mr Harvey react? Violently. Can you elaborate? He, um, <clears throat> shoved me against the wall, at which point I knocked my head, as noted in the FME's report. Who initiated contact? Excuse me? Did you initiate physical contact with Mr Harvey or vice versa? When Mr Harvey was goading me about his son, I felt threatened. I thought that Mr Harvey could get violent, so I grabbed the front of his shirt to preempt him. That's when he shoved me. Thank you, PC Gal. Evan Griggs has been the landlord of the Dew Drops Inn for nearly 20 years. In fact, he owned it until last year when Luke Jarrett brought him out. Since that time, not much has changed in the pub itself. But the living quarters upstairs have become a no-go zone. All sorts of weird comings and goings. Namely this man, Russell Guthrie, drug mixer extraordinaire. So Luke Jarrett's been running his main stash from his pub? No one noticed. Someone did. Griggs also told us there was a break-in in the pub a couple of nights ago. It wasn't reported to the police. Jarrett explicitly told Griggs that he wanted to deal with it himself. No police involvement. But we thought we'd have a look anyway. Look what we found on CCTV. Is that who I think it is? Bob Harvey. Do you recognise that rucksack? So he wasn't working for Jarrett, he was ripping them off. Jarrett must have worked out who hit his stash. Yeah, but how? Well, Harvey's not exactly the brightest spark, is he? It was common knowledge that he owed Dylan Morrison seven grand, and when he found out he paid him, he put two and two together. And when Jarrett came looking for the drugs and Bob, Liam got caught in the middle. And that's why Harvey provoked Ben into arresting him. What, he wanted to be in the police cell? For protection from Jarrett. Well, why didn't he say something? These guys beat his kid half to death. Well, that would mean admitting that he'd stolen the cash and drugs from Jarrett. Right, let's get him into interview. It's time to find out if Mr Harvey is more afraid of Luke Jarrett or us. Doesn't prove anything. <laughs> You're right. It's all circumstantial. The money you gave Dylan Morrison? Circumstantial. The CCTV of your son carrying that same rucksack only 24 hours later and throwing it off a bridge. Circumstantial. The fact that someone broke into your house and beat your son half to death. OK, you made your point. No, I don't think we have, Mr Harvey. I don't think you quite understand your predicament. What do you mean? You should be worried we haven't got enough evidence. Because then we'd have to release you. 
These people did this to your son. Now, even if you don't want to get back at them for his sake, you might want to think about your own health. Listen to me. Luke Jarrett's not going to stop until he gets back what you owe him. And unfortunately for you, what you owe him is currently in our evidence room. All right. What do you want from me? What do I have to do? We want you to give Luke Jarrett back his rucksack. At the pub you stole it from. What are you talking about? Only this time, you'll be wearing a wire. We need to make the right decision. Yeah, well, it's over here, is it? Here it is. Been through a few of these. Can you please know that Bob Harvey's admitted he stole cash and drugs from Luke Jarrett. He stole the drugs? Yeah, and when Jarrett went to get them back, little Liam got caught in the middle. Hold on, sir. Bob didn't hit me. So everything I've just told the DPS is a lie. One way or another, Bob Harvey is responsible for what happened to his son. And he knows it. Where's Harvey now, then? With CID. Making restitution. Right, is everyone in position? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm in the bar now. Okay. Keep it nice and simple. I'll take the rucksack in. The moment we see the drugs inside, you give the code word spectacular. That's when we come in. Got it? Yeah, I've got it. I'll have a look this place every once in a while. I'll be fine. Just make sure you guys keep up your end of the deal. Tango one's just come downstairs. All units, stand by. I see that you got the message, then. Eh? Yeah, I, I've got your goods. Uh, it's going to take me a bit of time to get the money back, but I will get it back. Yes, you will. Can we go upstairs? I just want to get this so early. Of course. Just keep cool, woman. I just want you to know how sorry I am, my boy. I just needed the money, that's all. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Neither do I. Did you really think I wouldn't find out it was you? Well, come on, Robert, give us a code, word. How did you? I oh, know it was me. It's just so that the birdie told me. Yeah, I'll see. Little birdie. That's spectacular. All units, go, go, go! <laughs> Was it? Luke Jarrett, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possession and distribution of a Class A substance. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm you with the fence. Do not mention with pressure. I'm now showing the suspect pictures of exhibit TP4. Photos of cocaine and mixing chemicals found in Mr. Jarrett's possession. There's three kilos of uncut cocaine here, plus several rats ready for street sale. No oh, comment. With Bob Harvey's testimony and the forensics from the pub, we don't need a confession. You're only hurting yourself. Bob Harvey's a drunk, not to mention a thief, and a bad one at that. Not the most reliable of witnesses. But a motivated one, after what you did to his son. Harvey's got a son. For the benefit of the tape, I'm now showing the suspect exhibit CH4. Photos of Liam Harvey. I've never seen him before. Well, you think I did that? Why would I want to slap a kid around? To send a message to Mr. Harvey. Give me some credit. I'm not a coward. Liam's already told us that he was assaulted by the same men that broke into their house earlier this morning. We both know that was you. Someone's spinning you a line, mate. That place was empty when it was turned over. No Bob, no son, no rucksack. I don't know who done that to this kid, but you ain't pinning it on me. No way. You couldn't have done it. And Liam said he was attacked by the people who broke into his house. Why would he lie about that? According to Jarrett, Liam wasn't even there. Well, of course he wasn't. Well, he found the rucksack over the bridge and he come to see me. He's found the drugs, got rid of them, and then come to see me to get his father out of trouble. When Harvey found out, Liam discovered it was the last that his dad wanted. I want Bob Harvey answering now. Look, enough. I just helped you get Jarrett, and now you're believing him? This is ridiculous. Luke Jarrett has had no contact with your son, Mr. Harvey. And yet at 6.24 this morning, Liam threw that rucksack containing the drugs that you stole from Mr. Jarrett 
off the Ralton Road Bridge. Liam found the drugs at home, didn't he? He found the drugs and terrified that you were in trouble, he got rid of them. What he failed to realise was that Luke Jarrett already knew that you'd nicked him and he wanted them back. But you couldn't give them back because of Liam. Because your son had tried to protect you. That's what he said, they tried to protect me. He signed my death warrant. I didn't mean to hurt him so badly. I just lost it and next thing I know, Liam's lying at the bottom of the stairs. It's that couple's fault, you know? Trying to get inside my son's head? Why don't you take the rest of the day off? You've done enough here. No, no, not you, I haven't. I'm going to go and see Liam, tell him he's safe. He won't appreciate it, not coming from you. I owe him, Sarge. I owe him. Liam. I'm so sorry, mate. What for? For not being there this morning when you needed me. Where's my dad? He's been charged. He's probably going to go to jail. No, you can't do that. He hasn't done anything. We know that he took those drugs. We know what he's done to you. Look, mate, you don't have to lie anymore. He can't hurt you now. No, please don't let them take my dad away. You promised you'd help me anything you said. You could talk to them, but explain you didn't mean it. It's too late. It's out of our hands. He's already confessed. How can you say that? You've taken my mum and dad away. I'm going to be left by myself. Now, look, social services will find you a family to look after you, to care for you. Family? I've already got a family. I don't want to live with strangers. No, good people. Look, look what he's done to you. It's your mum. He's my dad. I love him. But he doesn't love you. I'm so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. It's, it's just that he, he hurts you. He got angry. Haven't you ever got angry and does what you feel bad about? I'm tired. I want to be on my own. Tells me you've been given the all clear from the DPS. Yeah. Good. Sarge. I just want to say thanks. It's my job to look after my officers. All the difficult choices you made yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. How's Liam? He's confused, angry, hurt. At me, mostly. What do you expect? Flowers in a parade? <laughs> You're a police officer. You did your job well. You're not a social worker. You can't afford to be. I just thought. I yeah. know what you thought. I've read your file. I know why this is important to you. Why Liam is important. I thought personal details are meant to be private. If you can have a positive experience in foster care, maybe Liam can too. You'd like to get into people's heads, didn't you, Sarge? I wouldn't have put my neck on the line for you otherwise. Well, I guess I owe you one. Owe me? I didn't do this as a favour. Then why? You remind me of someone. <laughs> Who? Me.
next time on the field. Well, you took it to CID? Yeah. A bit premature. That's not very professional. Hitmen don't normally give out phone numbers. Oh, if someone's angry oh, enough to order a hit on me, you lot knocking on their doors is hardly going to help. She's got real guts. She just needs to learn to rein it in. Next. So it's pretty obvious you're seeing all these things to help your father's defence. That's a bit of a coincidence, don't you think? Sarah, if you're lying, you are perverting the course of justice. Do you understand how serious this is? But it's true. It's trial and retribution. And over on ITV2, Colleen's search continues in Bristol for real women.